So in this example, we're going to actually calculate the T and B vectors, unit vectors. So what's given to us is the, uh, our friend, the circular helix, if you remember. Uh, cosine T um, I plus sine T J. So here's the circle part and T K. Okay? So, so this is the circular one. I should write, should have written a circular helix, one of. What we need to find is the three unit vectors uh, the unit tangent vector, the unit normal vector, and the binormal vector, which is also a uh, unit length. So here we go to. Um, what I wrote earlier, the definition of the three. So we jump into the definition and I'm going to say, all right, the uh, unit tangent vector as a function of t is the, the first derivative divided by its magnitude. So the first derivative, uh, first of all, let's, do, let's see what is the magnitude. Well, no, let's first see what is the first derivative. I'm, I'm sorry, I cannot put the, uh, the cart ahead of the horses. So uh, the first derivative will be um, the component. I do it in IJK notation. The derivative of the cosine in the I direction, the derivative of the sine, the cosine direction in the J direction, I'm sorry, and one in the K direction. So this is a vector in IJK notation. And um, what is the magnitude? Well, you have sine squared, cosine squared, I'm sorry, sine squared plus cosine squared, that's one, and, um, and plus one from the K. So you have um, sine squared, negative sine T squared plus cosine T squared plus one, so you have two. So the result would be one over square root of two, and here we have the negative sine t i plus cosine t j plus k. So there is your unit tangent vector. It gives you the direction of the curve. Remember, r is a position vector. It gives you the direction of any point in time t uh, from the origin to that particular point on the curve. But the tangent, the unit tangent vector, give you the actual direction of the curve at any given time. All right? But remember, a curve has three directional vectors now. Has the tangent, the normal, and the binormal. The tangent really point the direction of the progress, and the normal and binormal are both perpendicular to that. Each one in, in, uh, is orthogonal to the other, so in two different directions that are perpendicular to each other. But the threesome are, are all uh, a description of a single point on a curve as the point moving along the curve. So we have that part done, and now we need to construct the, uh, the normal vector. Can I undo the split or? We are good? All right, so by definition, remember it's, uh, it's the uh, derivative of the tangent divided by its magnitude. So uh, let's look at the derivative of the tangent. What are the component? Uh, the derivative of negative sine t is negative cosine t in the i direction, the derivative of cosine t I don't know, I noticed that I had a very small plus here but when we go back to the t, uh, this was plus in front of the cosine right? in case you wrote it otherwise, but when you take the derivative negative sine t in the j direction and what about the k direction? zero, so we are not going to write it, and what will be the uh, magnitude? And what did I forget? One over square root of t. 
right? Uh, one over square root of two. So let me write it again. I for I didn't really forget it because it's going to cancel out. So with the magnitude. I'm sorry. So, but uh, since I I write in in the detail here, I might as well include that. In my note, there is a shortcut. So the magnitude, uh, well, you have this uh, scalar mag quantity, and the magnitude is simply cosine uh, squared plus sine squared. So. And this, of course, is one, and these two guys cancel each other. So uh, what you have at the end is simply a negative cosine ti minus sine tj. That's it. So this is the normal vector. And well now we need, we need to construct the binomial vector. And we'll do the cross product. So the, uh, <coughs> the, normal, the tangent vector, we have square root of two, uh, because square root of two is a scalar multiplier. Remember the properties of these uh, dot, uh, the, the dot and the cross product. And in this case, the property of the cross product, if you have a scalar multiplier, multiplier, you pull it out. You just, yeah, go ahead. It's reduced. If you square it and take the square root, you square it to take the square root, you're back to one of the square root of two. But no, 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 I get that, I get that. But shouldn't it be under the square root in the cosine? Yeah. Cosine yeah. Square yeah. It. But you square it, and then you square factor it back out. Yeah, yeah let's jump on it. <laughs> so w what I was supposed to do, enter the uh, P, the tangent. So it's a negative sign in the I direction cosine t in the j direction and one in the k direction, right? And the, uh, the normal is negative cosine t in the i, negative sine t in the j, and zero in the k direction. So we have the, uh, the square root of, one over square root of two outside, and what are the components? In the i direction, we have uh, zero minus negative sine t, so positive sine t in the i direction. In the j direction, we have negative, but we have zero here, and here we have negative, negative. So notice that we'll have three negatives in the j component. Okay, negative from here, and this zero minus, that's the second negative, and negative cosine t. So the end result is negative cosine t in the j direction. What about the k direction? We have sine squared minus negative cosine squared, right? And that would be a big one. So we have k, and that's it. You have three negatives on the j component, okay? Close the parentheses, thank you. And we use this example to complete. Problem number 11. All right, and so this is it. Uh, and I have another thing to talk about.